Hello and welcome to the video. This video is about this thing here. This took me a while to get hold of. I've been waiting for this for about three weeks since I ordered it from Banggood. This is the new Matek 2.4 GHz PWM receiver with variometer. And this is something I've been really interested to get my hands on because recently I looked at the Beta FPV version. And as you can see here, you can access all the settings of things like the channels, reversing, fail safe positions, and all that from the Wi Fi. So the fact that this not only is a PWM receiver, uh, but it's made by Matek, uh, an outfit that I really like. I use a lot of Matek flight controllers and GPSs here. But if you look on the website, there's some really interesting stuff. For example, they've added a second UART, so you can plug a GPS into it, so you can have all the GPS telemetry data sent down to your radio. They've also got the variometer on there as well, and they've even got a main battery voltage a VBAT pin on here so that you can connect it directly to your flight battery and get that information telemetry back onto your radio as well. Now, in addition to the main PWM pins, there is a separate strip on the other end for the VBAT and GPS pins. And that's kind of an interesting decision of how they've laid everything out. Channel 5, for example, is moved off the main PWM outputs and channel 8, the extra channel is available in an odd place on the back too. So if you actually look on the receiver itself, it goes channel one, two, three, four, six, and seven, and then channel eight is on the back. There's no heat shrink in the bag. So there are the two different sets of pins, both straight and angled. I've soldered on the angled ones on here. So yes, unfortunately, you are gonna to have to warm up your soldering iron if you want to be able to plug servos into this thing. And it looks like it's made of two boards. There is the ELRS receiver on the top, and then underneath is what appears to be a version of the Matek CRSF to PWM adapter board that they've added some additional logic to for the GPS connection, the VBAT, and the variometer. Now, I spent a bit of time, and as you can see, uh, put pins on mine for not only the main outputs, but also for the GPS and everything else, because I will be putting this into a wing and putting it through its paces, because I've already got a test in mind for ELRS, because it is kind of designed, let's be honest, for more flight controller applications, where the first four channels are full resolution, channel five is stuck to a binary position, because that's dedicated to ARM, and then you have the other channels available, which you can set up as wideband. So I powered it up, let it go into the Wi-Fi access point and connect it on the computer and had a look. It's running version 2.2 of the ELRS code. But interestingly, it's not running Matek firmware. It's running a version of the DIY firmware. And this is where I started to crease my brow a little bit. Because what it appears we actually got here is the top board is the ELRS receiver. The bottom board is that CRSF to PWM adapter. But logically, they are treated completely separately. So what that means is to do your ELRS stuff on the top, then you connect to it and do your normal stuff. But interestingly, the PWM connections and how all that stuff's configured isn't in that ELRS web page as it is in other PWM receivers. Similarly, if you want to change the settings and do the firmware of the bottom board, then that is a separate thing you have to do. There's a separate configurator available on the Matex site. So rather than everything being available through one interface, there's actually two different lots of settings. And I was a little bit disappointed in that. I was kind of hoping that everything would be there straight out of the box and that I could change all the stuff that I can do on other PWM receivers and also potentially have a look and change things how the UART stuff is configured as well. But that wasn't the case. In terms of binding and setup, there's nothing really to write home about. It works exactly as you'd expect. The interesting thing to note here, though, is it does ship with a binding phrase on it of 123456. I think it is by default. I updated mine to version 2.4 and then set uh, the bind phrase to be blank, which is how I have my radios here. Once that was done, then it was just a case of power cycling the receiver three times, going through the bind process, and away you go. Once it's bound, you can go into the telemetry page in HTX or OpenTX and discover the sensors, and you get loads of sensors even without the GPS installed. One of those 
is the vertical speed and if you set that up to be your variometer then if you go and set the variometer to be turned on and off by a switch in this part of the menu then you can hear the beeping and the version 2 of the radio the radio master has the ability to output audio so you can put a little earpiece in and that's great if you have something like a slope sora where gaining and losing height is something you're really interested in in fact in a recent flight i noticed it was a really sunny day i was flying my dolphin that when i hit a thermal the altitude could change quite dramatically and it would be nice to have a vario to let me know if i didn't spot that in the osd so in summary this is a receiver that works nicely and has lots of additional benefits however to me it feels like it's one or two steps away from a final product and the reason i say that is because you do have to treat the two boards that are part of this as separate boards for both configuration and firmware updates I like the fact that it's an ELR receiver that has PWM. It does explain why they've moved channel 5 away from the pins at the end here, because they had to do that because there was no way in software that you could move or dynamically change those things. I think that would have been a better way to do it. I'm looking forward to more integrated ELRS PWM receivers where everything is available and all the configurations options are available in that web page rather than have this kind of two boards stuck together that kind of do different jobs and has to be addressed in a different way. Hopefully the next version that comes along will have a full eight outputs that will allow us to move channels and do everything that you can do on other PWM systems. Have a clearer layout for pins because I as you saw have had to kind of put the pins on the other end as well for things like the GPS uh, which means it's got pins sticking out of both ends which is probably less than ideal and I hope that it has pins in the box so that when you do need to do your soldering you don't have to try and find extra pins if that's what you want to do. Versions with pins also soldered on I think would be a great idea if you're watching this Maytech. Not everyone I know that I fly with is particularly interested in having to do a 10 minute soldering job before they can use the thing. So hopefully that's interesting. Stay tuned, this will absolutely be appearing in another video. This is about to be installed in one of my uh, AR uh, wings uh, for some testing with ELRS to test something that developers claim, which I think there's only one way to find out to actually do it. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.